So I had the little FTR 16S uh, iBus receiver set up on my iNav Rover powered uh, buggy uh, and easily programmed up in the PL18. I'll show you how I set it all up at the end of this video, uh, but we'll just show that this actually works, no problems at all. Bright sunshine here, I have the sunscreen on and I have the screen turned up to 100%. Uh, yeah, you can see it pretty well, it's not too bad really. I've put a bit of tape over the LED because I really didn't like that LED um, and turned all the sounds and vibrations off because I didn't like them either. And the voice prompts, um, I'm not keen on the voice prompts, they're sort of heavily accented Chinese English. Uh, you can understand them okay but really we need, we need different options for the voice pack. Hopefully that will come soon. And I've got a neck strap, it's of course an FR Sky neck strap. So, it uh, would be a really good idea if Flysky to provide an extra, <laughs> just so that we're not going to use the oppositions. So this is working well. What I need to do is get my uh, stick cam. I'll just put my stick cam on. So these switches here are easy enough to reach. These ones you sort of have to do reach up to them. Very easy to get to the sliders. Uh, not that I need it for this particular buggy. I do have a waypoint mission uh, loaded on, so I should be able to engage that. Uh, I might have to reload it though. We'll just do that, bring it in. Disarm. It's getting busy around here. I oh, know, oh, there's more people coming too. Alright, so load the mission, arm the board. And off she goes for a waypoint mission. I also have RSSI uh, in the screen that automatically comes through iBus on channel 14 for INAV. Uh, auxiliary 10 for beta flight, I think it is. Thanks to uh, Dutch RC's video, I found that out. So yeah, channel 14 automatically sent by uh, this receiver on iBus. Easy to set up. Might bring it back home now. We've got some people coming who will chase it around I'm sure. Buggy's coming back home now. So the, for this sort of setup the transmitter is absolutely fine. No different to any other transmitter I've used. Feels really nice. Uh, hanging on the lanyard of course it would be kind of heavy on the just holding it but easy to hold I like the fact that it's sort of kind of thin as well and um, easy enough to see the screen with the shade and uh, turned up fully bright this arm um, yeah that all works well okay uh, let's go and have a look at how I set the transmitter up for INAV and uh, show the RSSI as well. So now I'll show you how to set up the Paladin radio with the FTR16S uh, iBus connected to iNav and uh, set up for a rover. First up we have to set up a, a basic model, just a basic aeroplane model. Uh, so we would choose uh, a different model, so chosen model 2 named it INAV Rover, model type just a basic aeroplane, assign the channels, uh, so airline channel 1, elevator channel 2, throttle channel 3, rudder channel 4, assign the auxiliary channels I have, uh, channel 5 on switch B, this one here, it says up but it doesn't matter, it uh, just takes the whole switch sequence, um, so that is my waypoint mission, Arming switch is this one, uh, switch G on channel 9 and my return to home switch is switch D on channel 8. Uh, and that's all we need to do here but we just need to make sure channel 14 is clear. Uh, that's where the RSSI comes in. So just look at the servos, they're all going up and to the right, that's all okay. Waypoint mission switch return to home switch and arm switch there and that's all we need for a rover. 
Now you might notice with this particular model I have less items in the menu. That's because you can set that up in for each model. Custom main menu. Uh, and you can uh, enable or disable any items on that list. Things you don't need like mixes, delayed setup conditions and things like that. You wouldn't use for an INAV uh, or a quad. Uh, you can just get rid of them. You can move them around as well. Uh, so that just makes it a bit easier uh, to find items. Receiver setup, uh, so no, I don't need to bind it. I did need to bind it actually, uh, and all you do is push the bind button on the receiver, connect it to power, and that'll give you a flashing light. Then click on bind receiver, and it will just bind the receiver pretty quickly, and we'll get a solid green light with this little receiver. Fail safe, we need to set up fail safe value. I thought it had all the different options like hold and um, custom and no pulses it actually only has sort of custom setup I suppose uh, so what you do is you select the channel uh, for this particular one we want to go into return to home for fail safe so uh, channel 8 is my return to home and it'll be turned off by default so then turn it on select the switch position for return to home and then just get out of there and it'll save it as uh, the return to home position for fail safe that's all we can do. Receiver protocol IBUS for this one. Uh, I can use IBUS with INAV at the moment. Or you could use SBUS as well. And that's pretty much all there is to do on the radio. So now we'll have a look at INAV and see how it actually works. So I have the USB plugged into the rover. Plug it in. And if you watch here you'll see the receiver information so that shows that it's receiving information from the uh, receiver to the transmitter directly we can connect might as well connect up a battery too and you'll see uh, the screen showing up there as well right let's connect go to the ports all we have to do is have serial rx ticked uh, on, I've got it on UART 2, GPS on UART 4, uh, it's an F405 wing board. The RSSI is automatically sent on channel 14 so we don't need analog RSSI here, there's no separate RSSI connection. Modes where the arm switch channel 9, uh, return to home channel 8, waypoint channel 5, nothing else there. Receiver, we set the RSSI channel to 14 receiver type serial and serial receiver provider IBUS. See all the graphs going in the right direction. Receiver on channel 14. Switches all working. Did notice the switches were reverse of what I'm used to so I had to in the modes I had to uh, just change the position of the little capture range. And we just tick RSSI in the OSD to make sure it shows up in the screen. And that's pretty much all there is. Uh, there's no extra connections for RSSI. So we have RSSI up there. Can I make it a bit better to see? There we go, this one here. And if I turn the radio off, we should. It's warning me that it's still powered up. Yes, that should drop to zero. There we go, RSSI has dropped to zero. It may be a different range to what I'm used to with the FR Sky. Um, now we'll turn it back on again. We should get RSSI pops up again. Yeah, there we go. It was actually dropping down to oh, 97, 96 occasionally out in the field, but uh, it does seem to read pretty high values. And finally, the connection here. Uh, here's the cable coming from the receiver. Uh, I have the signal wire connected to R2 on UART2 and just taking power from where the S-Bus was, uh, ground at 4.5 volts, so simple as that, makes it all work. No,